Hi guys, welcome to my June 2014 Anime Pickups Part 2. Uh, a little bit later than usual, try to do it within the month normally. I've had these for a while, but um, this isn't the uh, pickups video I was talking about in my uh, Captain Harlock Arcadia Review movie unboxing, if any of you saw that. Um, I have like a whole themed, uh, essentially around that theme of Harlock or whatever, so <laughs> yeah, a whole theme of similar type shows. Um, but I'm still waiting on one thing, and it only I bought it two weeks ago, and it's only just been, uh, you know, uh, shipped. So it's going to be a while before I even get it. So I thought I'd save that and uh, just do the ones I have now. Anyway, uh, Read or Die, the Blu-ray box, uh, pretty rare set nowadays. Um, very much out of print. Uh, very collectible. <laughs> Um, obviously put out by Aniplex of America um, for a pretty good price at the time, honestly. I mean, it was okay. oh, actually, it was actually saying that. It was kind of expensive, to be honest. But I've ended up paying even more now. Um, I bankrolled uh, this set, which I'd always wanted to get. It always bugged me, but I didn't get it when it was in print. But yeah, I bankrolled uh, this set by uh, when I sold the Sailor Moon DVDs in, in anticipation of the Viz Media uh, Blu-rays that are coming out. Anyway, yeah, Read or Die, uh, sort of like a superpowers X-Men type story, but they're not really mutants, but um, I've watched the OVA already, I haven't watched the TV series, which is the sequel, it's like 26 episodes or whatever, uh, but the OVA, which is like a free episode thing, was pretty cool, uh, the animation was quite nice for given the time it was made, especially since it was a digital production, like it's one of the nicer looking digital shows from that era that I'd seen. Uh, but yeah, I kind of like the story, uh, like secret agents with these sort of like I said, superpowers, like X-Men type thing. Uh, they, they work for a, a secret agent. The secret agents for the British Libraries, it's called. It's supposed to be like this umbrella worldwide corporation sort of thing, but underground, like, you know, and above the governments of the of the world or something. It was very strange. Um, <laughs> even as a, a British person myself, myself, it was kind of, this is a bit weird. But I guess, like, maybe it's like harking back to uh, the fact that you know, the UK had, like, the world's biggest empire, you know, and stuff like that, so maybe, you know, I think Code Geass almost, like, did the similar sort of thing, even though they weren't technically British in that, um, but, yeah, read or die, um, I thought it was a pretty good story, um, I did, I certainly liked the action, uh, for the OVA at least, um, but like I said, I haven't seen the TV series, um, the interesting thing about the TV series, uh, is that the main characters from, uh, the OVA, uh, do carry over, but they're not the main characters. The main characters are like just four other girls that seem to have the same uh, powers as Reedman, who's the main character for the OVA, where they can like control paper and its uh, its properties as such. Like they can turn it into essentially something that's like solid rather than like, really uh, heavy and stuff like that. Just interesting <laughs> abilities to do with paper. And as you can see in the background, it seems to be that the four girls. I think it's four, maybe five. I can't remember, but is it four? Yeah, it looks like it's four. Yeah, four girls seem to have that power in particular. I, I feel like this is probably, the TV series might be a bit of a cash cow, like the OVA did pretty well, let's expand on it. Then again, it was based on the manga, I don't know if, and I don't know if uh, the manga adapts, uh, the TV series is adapted from the manga, or the manga is solely based, uh, is solely the OVA story. But anyway, yeah, this is real or die. I, I think it'll be cool. I, I, like I said, I, I like the OVA, so hopefully it'll be a good series. And I'm really happy to find, uh, finally own the Aniplex uh, of America Blu-ray box. Uh, something, like I said, I've been bite <laughs> nibbling in the back of my brain, just like, oh god, I wish I'd bought that set. So when I got the money for the Sailor Moon set and I saw this on eBay, I was like, this is my chance, and if I don't win it now, I probably will just leave it. But I did win the the auction, and yeah, I've got it, so it's really cool. Okay, next up we have Aesthetica of a Road Hero. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Aesthetica, Aesthetica or Aesthetica of a Road Hero. A uh, complete series. Um, <laughs> edgy sci-fi fantasy action demons and the like. Um, honestly, not really that. I don't really know why I bought this, it's sort of, this is the last time I'm doing what I'm about to explain, one of the things that I've done in the past, which is, if I see an auction for a set on eBay, or buy it now, or whatever, for a, sh for a set, or an anime I guess, for, uh, for a set that is worth more than what the person's selling it for, 
like this was about half price compared to what it is to buy it brand new I find it difficult sometimes to turn it down because I always think of the back of my mind I'm like if I have the money if I buy this now rather than later if I decide I want it later then <laughs> it becomes one of those things like if I decide I want it later I'm going to regret not buying it now so I'll buy it now so I don't regret it later stupid logic Anyway, it's pro I, I've determined to kick that habit. It's a terrible habit. It's something that's allowed me to buy filler for my collection, where there's really shows that I don't really have too much interest in, but I bought because they were cheap. I don't plan to do that anymore, because I've realised, when I when I looked over my collection as I was sorting stuff out, I noticed there was a lot of gaps, where there was a lot of things uh, where I was like, damn, why... why? <laughs> Why do I not own this already, and I already have this stuff? Like, it was, you know, like, why don't I have all the Lupin stuff, but I bought this? Like, I could buy Lupin the series, the first series from Discotech, the 1973 or whatever it is, series from Discotech, but I bought this. Like, this was only a few pounds less. Like, what am I doing? Like, I want Lupin much more than I want this. So, anyway, like, I feel like I'm being harsh to this show, but it's not it's not really this show in particular, although to be honest, looking from the video behind, this show sort of doesn't look that great at all, really. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, it's one of the, this show, in fact, from the synopsis I read and the tags that I've seen, it kind of looks like a show that I've already seen already, like, it's the same freaking frickin formula, you know, like some magical type fantasy school with demons and, like, lots of uh, action uh, action and uh, etchy stuff, obviously, as you've seen. <laughs> uh, Sci-fi, fantasy, sort of melded together. So, yeah, it's uh, it's aesthetic of a rogue hero, and I bought it. I don't know why, but yeah, that's one of my pickups for this month. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Um, before I talk about this release here, which I finally picked up, took long enough. There's an interesting trailer on the uh, front of this, <laughs> um, which I thought I'd just quickly show you guys. Uh, some of you might remember that uh, The Grey Man initially was going to be coming out on Blu-ray. In fact, the first half did. Like the, Out of the uh, two sets that uh, Funimation, I think, were going to do, they were going to do 26 episodes on one, 26 on the other. I think that was how it was going to go. So this is advertising the second box set, which was to have the remaining 26 episodes for Season 1. Obviously all Funimation never did with Season 1, but obviously this never came out on Blu-ray, even though it's being advertised here, so, by the, the trailer here, like, this never actually made it to Blu-ray. Um, uh, the first half had so many issues with video quality-wise, um, that Funimation just dropped the second release and never even did it. So, it's quite interesting really to think just how bad uh, The Grey Man has been treated in many ways, like it got those 50 episodes released but then even though it sold really well, like Funimation never actually got around to doing the other 50 because of licensing issues, they could never get the other 50 episodes, then they put out the first half on Blu-ray and then they couldn't put out the second half because the first one was such a disaster. It's, yeah, it just, it just made me laugh that that trailer was there because I, I, I initially loaded this up you know, to get to this point to talking about it, I was just like, what, what the, oh my god, this is actually a trailer for the second half. Anyway, whatever. So yeah, this is uh, Evangelion 1.11. Another thing about that trailer is just reminding me is that it just shows how old this release is and how long it's taken me to get it. So yeah, this is the, uh, this is the uh, first of, I believe it is only three movies, I think like 3.33 is the last Evangelion rebuild movie, as, like, it was a project they did as Pretty much everyone knows now, but anyway, it's a project that uh, is retelling uh, Evangelion, like the original series, the 26, 26 episode series, plus all the, you know, all the extra parts at the end and all that. Uh, just redoing it, condensing it down, and just making a, you know, a proper go at it. Kind of like what they did with Berserk, basically. It's the same thing. So uh, yeah, this is the first one. I've taken way too long to get it, but I got it. I saw this on eBay going cheap, and I was like, right, I'm buying it now. That's w that's too, way too good a deal. It's like half the price it normally goes for, and I'll get the other, uh, the second one, and obviously the third one comes out pretty soon. So I, I feel like I've done the, or it's almost worked out pretty well for me that the third one, which I know has been taken ages, has taken ages to come out, um, comes out pretty soon. So it's actually worked out pretty well that. I've decided to uh, get the first one now, and then the second one, and I'll just be able to watch the third one as and when. But uh, yeah, Ivan Gillen Rebuild, the first movie, 1.11, and it's really nice uh, set. The set is really good. 
uh, quality and stuff. So uh, nice and shiny, a nice uh, digibook type. Well, not digibook, but <laughs> a nice <laughs> bit of packaging, digipack. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's even game. Let's move on to the uh, DVDs. Okay, so first of the DVDs, we have a six episode early 90s OVA called Here is Greenwood. Um, put out by Media Blasters. In fact, though, apparently it was originally done by Central Park Media uh, back in the 90s, and they even dubbed it, and I think it was only ever put out on VHS, their version. And then Media Blasters reacquired it for DVD, and then they redubbed it. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this little six episode OVA comedy school life thing <laughs> has two dubs, which is interesting. Anyway, uh, yeah, here is Greenwood. I bought this because it's something that's always interested me. I'd heard about it a long time ago, and I, I kind of like the sound of the plot, which I'm going to read out to you now, actually. But well, I'll skip the first part. Basically, this guy here is in... He ends up moving to this school to get away from family life due to a broken heart. There's a little bit more detail than that, but whatever. And anyway, so... <laughs> says, uh, desperate to escape his pain from that family life thing. Uh, Kazuya leaves home and puts his fate in the fickle hands of dormitory life. He soon finds himself exiled into Greenwood, a housing facility for Ryukuto, whatever, <laughs> Academy's outcasts. His neighbours now include an ultra feminine, feminine roommate, what's this one? <laughs> a group of cult members, mobsters, the cunning class president, and this is probably my favourite bit, although I imagine it. Uh, it, I imagine it won't be uh, one of the main characters or anything, but as some guy who lives on the second floor with his motorcycle, <laughs> which is pretty great, uh, will Casio re retain his sanity or will Greenwood live up to its historical reputation as an asylum? Um, as you can see in the background on the DVD menu, it's got some pretty high fantasy type stuff going on. Like, I don't know if that's just them fantasizing. Like, I can't quite place if this is based in the real world or like some fantasy world. Um, the fact that like, they're wearing pretty standard school uniforms, you know, you know, he's leaving home to go to a, a high school as a dormitory and stuff. And there's parts of me that think that this might, this bit, the fantasy bit, uh, which is also on the back in a couple of screenshots, you can barely see. Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, I, I wonder if that's just uh, you know them some some of his uh, you know, cult club members, as they mentioned, like fantasizing and stuff, and they end up role playing or something. But anyway, yeah, it seemed pretty cool, like cool little comedy six episode thing. I was very interested in getting it. Sorry for a good price, so couldn't pass it up this time. So yeah, this is that is here is here is Greenwood. <laughs> okay, next up we have something majorly obscure. I actually picked this up like. Oh god, almost two months ago and I kept forgetting to include it in a video, so... But anyway, this is Joe vs. Joe. This is both collections, uh, there's three episodes on each. It was a six episode OVA put out in like the early noughties or whatever, like around 2002, around that sort of range, I think. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a part of the franchise of Akira no Joe, which is the famous 70s uh, boxing uh, manga anime. Um, it's one of like the very mo one of the more famous uh, series from that era, and this is like a little six episode OVA. It doesn't really have anything to do with the franchise directly. I don't think. I don't. I don't. Know, it's just part of the franchise. But I don't. I, that, it's not like it's a sequel or anything like that. It's just like a spin-off thing. But anyway, uh, one of the more interesting things about this release is just. <laughs> the irony and the obscurity of it. Um, this was put out by a company called Anime Who. Uh, there's their logo, Anime Who. It's a completely legitimate release. This is the only thing they ever did. Um, uh, the logo is an owl, so Anime Who or whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's so funny that they're called Anime Who. Because of the fact that this is like their only release, like it's really ironic. Because like no one's ever heard of them. It's like anime who? Who? <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. Um, it's really interesting though. Like they put this out, they dubbed it. First ever release, they dubbed it, which is pretty ballsy and might have been. <laughs> this is, you can almost I can almost sense like the the amount of mistakes that were made. This came out probably I think as the boom years of anime. Uh, were dying down and anime, the anime industry in America was effectively in quite a lot of trouble. You know, ADV was struggling, Genium was struggling, Bandai eventually struggling. 
So like it was around that like in that five six year period this came out, um, and to think that your first anime not only do you dub it when you know finances are really not <laughs> you know the anime industry like I said was on its knees, so you dub a sports anime and the sports anime is the first thing you license. While I respect that and I wish that in this in that day and age and even in this day and age that that was a viable thing to do that was just essentially business suicide in anime in America like your first license being a sports anime and you dub it despite probably the fact that you this is this was probably produced by people essentially working out of their you know bedroom this was like a bedroom release in terms of anime I would imagine very small team working on this but anyway there's some cool things about it like I said they did dub it which is pretty neat I haven't actually listened to the dub so I don't know what, don't know what the quality is like but one of the cooler things is that they had these DVD cases uh, where this is the disc holder, and I've never seen anything like this before, so there's no nub in the middle. But the interesting thing is, they've basically got these tabs up here, that say press, and if you press one, you can just slip, uh, there you go, you just slip the disc out. But the cool thing about it is because it's clipped in like this, let's try and do this properly without messing it up, because it's clipped in like this, it means the disc is actually essentially floating. <laughs> it's not actually touching any plastic, like the bottom of the disc where all the data is. Like, it's not touching any plastic, so no scratches are going to uh, be caused. Which I thought was really interesting. I don't know why that DVD packaging never caught on. Like, I can only imagine is that obviously the fail state is pretty probably not very good because obviously if one of those tabs breaks like the disc can no longer sit in that case like unlike if a teeth breaks on one of the uh, inner ring nubs on most DVD cases like you can probably still get it on there but if one of those tabs breaks you've had it like that case will no longer hold that disc so, anyway whatever that's Joe versus Joe interesting little uh, uh, thing I guess interesting release definitely wanted to get it the second I realized it exists and it costs like barely anything it was about six pound to get both both volumes brand new and sealed so yeah if you if you like boxing anime like uh, like fighting spirit and stuff if you just like sports anime in general I'd highly recommend getting this like it's dubbed and it's, and it's really cheap so yeah definitely worth getting it's a little uh, might be a little gem who knows I haven't watched it yet I doubt it's a little gem but it's certainly an interesting thing to have in your collection so yeah Joe vs Joe Finally, last, but certainly not least, uh, this is actually a replacement, but it's the only one I've bought recently, so it's coming in this pickups video rather than its own video with the other replacements that don't exist. So, uh, yeah, this is Now and Then, Here and There, the complete collection uh, from ADV. Uh, this is one of the other shows that uh, they did with uh, Central Park Media after Central Park Media went bankrupt or filed for such. Uh, ADV, uh, put out some of their releases and nice compact complete collections like World of Naru is one I've got and this is the other one um, so I'll be replacing the art box which is behind it <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute but anyway uh, yeah post apocalyptic dystopia um, you know kids fighting for their lives essentially being used as soldiers highly sci-fi series you know uh, uh, it's done by AIC who I've championed many a time on my channel, like one of the best uh, anime studios in my opinion. Opinion when they do stuff like this, like AIC will put out their fair share of, you know, uh, <laughs> filler like titles, really like etchy stuff and the like. But they'll also do some re when they do like sci-fi stuff. I feel like they do it really well, and they're one of the best to do it. Uh, this is a pretty highly acclaimed series. And uh, it's uh, 13 episodes, yeah, put out in 1999. I'm certainly uh, glad to uh, replace this in the collection. I, I definitely wanted to keep it in the collection. Um, so, yeah, this is like the uh, compact release. It's quite hard to get hold of now, but um, the ADV Films version. But uh, ACIR Holdings, I don't really know how else to say it, but it's A E S I R. Uh, they're one of the companies that spawned after ADV's demise, or section, so they're part of Section 23, along with Sentai Filmworks and uh, Made in Japan and stuff. Uh, they put out, uh, what was it? They've put out Magical Shopping Arcade, Abanabashi, Princess Tutu, and they apparently hold the license to this, but they haven't re-released it yet, so I don't know if they're 
ever going to do that so I just I saw this going cheap on eBay and I thought I'll finally get this because I, I just really want a smaller version of this in the collection but every, all, everything that's on here is also already on this version <laughs> the big fud uh, this is the collector's edition that Central Park Media put out I'll be selling this now so if anyone's interested just uh, drop me a PM or something and maybe we'll work out a deal Anyway, yeah, that's the collector's edition for that, and that's now and then here and there, and that's everything. That is everything for the rest of June. I know I talked uh, a hell of a lot in this video, so if you got to the end, bravo to you and thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to me uh, go on, go off on like not rants, but just talking forever. Um, so yeah, that's everything for June. Uh, I've got that other video, the Harlock related one, coming soon. I got so I've ordered two of the big releases that are coming out next month as well as one that came out uh, in June that um, I, uh, uh, I'm i waiting for another part of it to come but anyway uh, so yeah I've got some pretty cool stuff to come and I think I talked about everything else I was going to be doing soon but I've got Asian cinema pickups and stuff that I want to share with you pretty soon as well just waiting for one more thing and then that'll be everything and whatever blah 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 <laughs> I'll see you guys later see ya